Yes. Um, um, once again, I apologize for <coughs> uh, the break in the first communication. It's just as a result of um, the, I want the, the length of uh, the video not to be too long for people to be born. So this is uh, just a continuation of uh, the Sangul Tatali political history that I was on. <coughs> so if, uh, if I like, you will take that one as part one, and uh, this will be part two. It's just a continuation. <coughs> so I got to where um, I was talking about the current DC of uh, uh, Tetale Sangu, where uh, it was alleged that a communique has been uh, intercepted. Just last week, I had uh, an opportunity to review that uh, communication, where the DC the current DCE was alleged to have communicated or tried to interfere or manipulate, or in other words, should I say, uh, threaten uh, people that uh, are in charge of plan planning and coordinating activities in the district. I, uh, during that communique, which came to my possession, and that's why I said I first thank uh, people in government and the authorities that I have contacted who have done their part. I don't know whether they have been able to resolve the issue, uh, but if they haven't, I am just letting them, the public know that I am on it. And if it is not resolved, I will resolve it my own way. My own way it will be disastrous. There will be damages. Political consequences. I made that clear. In that communique that I was going to talk about, it was alleged that um, some of the projects, uh, they were purported to be the projects of a World Bank being funded by the World Bank and the Something Guinea Accord. That communities in Tatale Sangul district that were along the Togo border were to benefit from some of the projects that the funders feel that it will benefit both Ghana and Togo. So, what is contained in those projects was that initially it was sent to the district assembly for assembly members to deliberate. So during that meeting, it was agreed that the Kokoma committees that were involved, that were along directly, who shared border with Togo, were Sangul. If I say Sangul, the people should not get confused with the, uh, the constituency as Tatali Sangul or district Tatali Sangul. There's a community that is known as Sangul. See, all the people in that area in my previous video are referred to them as Sanguti. So that is why the whole area is known as Sangu. Even though you will find other uh, people who will not identify themselves as Sanguti. And we have Tatale Issa, which is the district capital. So under that Sangu village, they were to benefit from, uh, I think, uh, the quarters, teachers' quarters. And Dundon in my community were to benefit from uh, a nurse's quarters. So when the assemblymen sat down, they approved those two communities. And other communities like Lapale, which is close to Sini, I think it also shares a border. They were also to get something. The chart is there. So the approval was done. I think uh, it went in line with the World Bank uh, uh, what we call it, directives, and they approve it. In my community, for example, I think it got the highest bid, which had uh, about 600,000 Ghana City for that construction work to begin. I don't know when. And uh, all other communities, including a lot of boreholes. I understand this is not a government project. It's just been, uh, I think, that coordinated with the Ghana government to execute it. That is why it came to the district assembly. You see, so that was a good gesture from the uh, World Bank. And so during that communique, the current DC was alleged to have been pressing the coordinating director and the planner. I know people would term this as a scandal and would try to vilify other people why is sensitive information to come out. That is what democracy is about. Remember those people and those degrees because they studied in the field. Sorry about that. They are not politicians. 
and people should allow civil servants to do their job without fear or intimidation and interference. So in that communique that was intercepted, which I have, the DCE wrote a long message to these individuals, forcing them to take the projects of Sangul and Dondoni. He indicated that that of uh, Sangul should go to Nanchamba number two, and that of uh, Dondone should go to Sheni. The reasons he gave was that Sangul uh, has uh, an abandoned GSS block or something, which should be converted into uh, 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 quarters for the, uh, for the teachers to stay. And then number, number two, uh, the teachers didn't want to sleep there and they come to sleep in town, and so it impedes learning. Initially, I did not want to believe that this was a trouble, uh, 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 something. I don't want to involve tribalistic tendencies in that. But you cannot run away from that. That was clear. Because Sangul, as I'm saying, is about, if not six miles, it's more. It cannot be less than six miles to Tatali Township, which is a Konkoma community. The Nanchamba number two that you are talking about is either one and a half miles or two miles to Tatali Township. So if you were to take a project for teachers from Sangu that they have to travel seven miles to stay in town and go, as to compare to one and a half or two miles to town, which one is more convenient? So if this is not a travel intent, intent and I don't know how to call it, and that of Dondone, you allege that they have somewhere that they sleep, the nurses sleep. I want somebody to go to Dondone, my community, and ask the nurses where they sleep. Ask them. Yes. You see, sometimes we, the community, we are willing so much to help people to live in our community comfortably. But we cannot do what the government is supposed to do, common and simple necessities that you have to provide for the people. If you cannot do, we have done enough. I think uh, it was a rural uh, uh, community participation that brought the, the, that clinic to the area. The teacher's quarters at Dondona that you see, it was a manual job that we, the community members, did to put up that building. Is it the best? Probably not. And so you allege that the nurses have some place. I can tell you that where they have the maternity, these maternity nurses sleep at where they deliver people, the patients. You claim that as a decent place for workers or employees to sleep. And you said they should take you to Shini, your hometown. Where you built your house. You see, that is uh, some of the injustices I've been talking about. And maybe if people don't listen, they will think that I'm politically biased. If I say this and people think so, so be it. Just go and look at what I'm telling you. That if a DC can single-handedly want to manipulate or change projects that were confirmed by the DC Assembly members. Then anybody can tell me what you want. Because these bylaws by the city assembly are constitutional laws. And these assembly members, the assembly members have the authority to approve or reject. And so you don't have any authority to change what has been approved by the assembly members. You see, I know uh, accounts have a saying that Sir Woodney Sukama was here in Monochrono. And I don't speak to you very well, but I understand that one because I know I'll be using them one day. Literally, if you don't have money to give your mother in law or your in law, do not steal from her. And that, that goes to uh, the uh, uh, DC, the current DC. I'm saying this because I already laid out how. They help you, or my sister personally help in your campaign. She's from Dondoni, if you don't know that. And when you won, I don't know how many times you went there. Did you go to say thank you? I don't know. People like me, if we are there, <laughs> you won't get it that easy. I am there now because I'm very much involved. 
You won. 2012, you won in my community. That police station, you won. Check the records if you don't know that. Yes. And so because of your greediness, you, you ran away to Accra when you won that election. You didn't go to say hello to anybody. Four years time, you came back for the primaries, thinking that they were fools and they would vote for you as well. The primaries, you didn't even see the light. You failed, lost that election miserably. You got angered because you are rude already. You got angered and went solo, independent. That's what I'm telling MPP members and the authorities of the MPP that if you analyze this gentleman very well, and you know what you are doing, I don't think he was the right person to come back as a DC. Yes. He went solo, contested Honorable Mbamba, who is not the MP, in 2016. And that was why Honorable Achampong won. That's the greed we are talking about. You lost the primaries. And you went ahead, which I know is not a crime. But in some political parties, the ideology of the MPP ahead was that if you go solo, you don't come back. I don't know which of the political parties, but I know some people said that. That was what happened. Honorable Mbamba lost, and he lost. And Honorable Achempo won. That was why Honorable Mbamba became the DC. In that 2016 again, my own sister Cecilia Bajo. And two others, uh, one Asumedu, I think she's a woman uh, from Kuyole, and another gentleman, I think uh, Mr. Yao Jacob, were the short li listed candidates for the DCE in 2016. Honorable Mbamba was not in the, in, uh, uh, around the scene, but I heard somewhere that it was alleged that the then um, MPP chairman for Northern Region, Na Borunabu, now Na Borunabu, uh, appeal to the presidency that all candidates who stood and lost elections, general elections as parliamentary, parliamentary candidates should be given the slot of the DC. See, people, high profile people called me and said, oh, what? Your sister was uh, at the front line. There were three shortlisted people and they went to the top for uh, in interview in Accra. So a very big man, if I say that, and women called me but they didn't know who I was. They called me and told me that they heard I'm so-so and so to uh, this lady, but she's in the top spot. So this is the news they are hearing that they want to give that slot to Honorable Mbamba. So I asked them, what was the reason that they said they want, uh, uh, Naburi wanted to give it to Honorable Mbamba? I'm saying this so that people should see who I am. If I am biased, judge it for yourself. They said, oh, uh, the Naburi said, chairman said, People who contested and lost elections should be given something to compensate. So they were thinking that it was not fair because my sister had suffered for the party a lot and they feel that this should be her turn. I said, oh no, the politics and positions does not belong to anybody. Politics is who get what and how. You see? So I asked them, the same question. I said, so if my sister was the one who lost the general elections and Naburi Nabu wanted her to be the DC, will I oppose it? Will I have said it's not a good gesture? I said, Honorable Thomas Mumbai, I don't know him. I've never spoken to him. But is it not true that this guy lost a general election? Is it not true that he lost money? Is it not true that he wasted time? He received insults. He's just equally qualified as any member of that party. And, and, and in fact, he was overqualified. That's what I said. I said the fact that my sister is involved, just like I would say to anybody, if my sister was involved and it was the right thing to say, I would say it. So it was not uh, uh, an idea that, uh, I said any of the three people were most qualified too. They were shortlisted. So why make you think that my sister will be the most preferred candidate? That was how I, so people, the, one of the people who contacted me laughed and said, oh no, why, won't you come and we do politics? I said, under which party? He said, uh, MPP, I said, no, I'll be independent. Because that same thing I just 
told you, that scenario I just told you, if something is going on and I say, you will say, oh, maybe I'm exposing you. And that is where we'll start fighting, throwing chairs, and to come to the public domain. So I was not interested in partisan politics. You see, that is just to tell you what role we play and how far we have come when it comes to politics. And uh, DC, I don't know if you know all this. So all of a sudden you came back and you had the opportunity to bully your way through. I don't know what happened. And they gave you the DC issue. You should have learned the lesson if you were a smart guy. I don't know whether you are that smart. Because why you used to be the people were there, they said, oh, you were in abroad. Somewhere, teaching or something. I don't know. It could be true. But you should have been smarter. If that is the, 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 the credentials you put forward were true, you should have been smarter. And we would be the most comfortable or comfortable person to deal with people. And not to be discriminatory or tribalistic as you are. People fought for the party that you are running on. Including the people of Dundonin, people of Sangul, and everywhere be be within the constituency before you came. So you don't have any right to take what belongs to the people and send it somewhere. If you think those people or those communities have done so much for you and you want to reward them, lobby for government funded projects and give it to them. There are, I haven't talked of any income that you people get. Do you see me commenting about uh, uh, your uh, common fund? The monies that come into the district, have you seen me commenting about that? Or asking anybody how you use it? That's not my problem. You do not fight or you do not do anything for this. And so you don't deserve any right. I have told the people. I've informed high level personality in government that this was not going to go down peacefully. If they are listening, I will get opportunity to listen. This is not a betrayal. I only told you so that when I come back and put it in the public domain, it won't be news to you. What you do to the gentleman is not my problem. If you think that he's the best candidate for you to keep in that constituency, go ahead. But I just told you, and I just laid down the grounds, for which reason you are going to suffer. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not a political analyst. Maybe he's doing that to sabotage the current MP. Because I don't doubt that. If you lost a primary against him and you went solo and both of you lost, what makes people think that you are not going to come back in the same vein and sabotage him? Because I understand under your constitution, a sitting DC cannot contest a sitting MP. So, ideally, he knows that in 2024, he cannot come. So it is easy and proper for him to sabotage on our MP now so that when he loses this election, then the, both of them can come back and face off in primary towards 2028. I don't know. Maybe that's his intention. Other than that, why would you do such a thing? Well, you know that these two communities, Honorable Mbamba, I think he won in that community. I don't know of some good, but I know he won in Dondoni. And you won in Dondoni in 2012, and you won even when you went solo. Because by that time, they didn't know what uh, Honorable Momba was capable of doing. But when he became a DC, they saw what he was capable of doing. So I think he won. So are those people against the policies of the MPP that they voted consecutively for them? That is a big question I'm asking. I will not keep quiet. Sometimes there will people who, who don't know me will say, oh, well, because maybe this is coming from your community. No. If it is coming from anywhere and I hear about it, I'm going to talk. If this were initially for Shani and uh, Nanchamba, and he was diverting it to Sangul and Dondoni, and I hear of it, I will talk. I will tell him we wouldn't take anybody's project. Give us what you think we are due. That's how to end the respect from people. And uh, I had wanted to do this in Lokopal and uh, Basari. Maybe I'll hang on. Because my people are very learned. They have a lot of intellectuals. And they are going to make this thing public. 
and they will interpret it into the various languages for people to understand. And uh, like I said, if MPP thinks that this is the correct guy for the constituency, good luck. And if Thomas uh, Mbomba and the honorary MP for Tetel Sanguru, you are listening, you have to be wary. You ask yourself whether this guy is working in your interest or he's working against your interest. I don't hate anybody. Maybe it can become a political tool for NDC members. I don't know about that, if they can use it. But luckily, he's not the one in charge. He's not on the ticket. You see, that is the problem. I get into general trouble, general problems. And I, don't, I said, I don't fear anybody. If I look at uh, Honorable DC and see him, I'll confront him face to face. What is he going to do? What? If you do the right thing, I'll commend you. So far, I haven't seen anything uh, since he's uh, being MP and DC that he has done that I'll commend him. If he has done something good and I haven't heard of it, he should bring it on. And I'll let the people know. Other than that, I don't think you have the people at heart. You are there for your own interest. And that is not a good guy for the MPP. I heard that there was a, a problem within uh, Tateli, Sangul, and uh, about some incident. And one day, City FM interviewed him. He said he doesn't live there. I don't know where he lives. It will be, it will be a good thing if he lives in uh, his community. As uh, Cheney. And which means he's still in the, the constituency. He can live anywhere within the constituency. Now, if not that, you are not a normal MP. So if you are not living there, where are you? They should ask him properly. Probably he lives in Tamale. You see? So when you live in Tamale, that means you are going to become the DCE for Tam Tamale Metropolitan Assembly. That shows that you don't care if you tell the people that you don't live there. Where do you live? If you live in Sheni, Sheni is part of Tatali Sangu. And so you should know. Are you that ignorant? If you are, then you are not supposed to be where you are. I don't hate anybody. You can redeem yourself by doing the right thing. If you want, this is coming out. You can apologize. If you want to deny, you can deny. But the facts are there. I have got the test messages that you were pressing the people to change it. I got everything. I got the original chat, which I forwarded to your big men. People in government, ministers in government, whether they act on it or they don't act on it, sometimes they will feel there is a scandal, so they will not want to come to a problem. No, it is not. These are some of the things that you have to do to, remove, to, to redeem your image. Political parties, I'm telling you, if one person is misbehaving and causing embarrassment in the party, sacrifice him or her and move on. That's what politics should be about. Do not let him continue to disgrace you. Because if you don't do anything to him, I told you already that maybe the two years, allow him to complete. Let him finish, and that will be the end. Yes, because right now, you remove him, you put somebody there, the person it will take time to, 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 to settle down. And things are going to go bad, or worse. So you could call him to the round table, put it before him that this is what I am saying. He can choose to deny. If he denies, call me. I'll bring out the communication. Let him deny that these are not from him. These are not his words. And I'll go to his uh, uh, provider and pull it out. I'll pay money and pull out the conversation from his provider. For him to die. Why? You have the impudence to call people strangers. You came as a stranger too. If you want to redeem yourself, respect the people that you came to meet. Political power is not forever. Those people that you came to meet, you will become one of them one day. If you don't know, I don't know where Honorable Nicholas is. If he's there, he will tell you. Maybe you are not in the same political party, he won't tell you. But of course, you will see him. I like to make genuine trouble. I do not interfere in people's uh, affairs. That when you have the audacity to misbehave, it doesn't matter who you are. 
I will come after you. Yes, I will. And this is going to be very short because I have nothing else to say. And I'll be gone for a little while. Thank you for listening. Again, this is Peter Mbaye Bajo.